Today, we stopped by DBR High Performance for a little inspiration from the Trackhawk. We haven't had a chance to drive one of these. Well, the key's in it. It's all yours. Let me see what it does here. Oh, yeah. It doesn't need dude. And come up with our own plan? Some type of Jeep SUV. Supercharged. Yep. Big, bad brakes. 707 plus horsepower. Yes. To go really fast. <laughs> David, how's it going? What's up? Olivia. So this is Brandon. Hey. How you doing, Brandon? And I told him what a nice place you had down here. We were hoping that you would give us a shop tour. Come on back. All right. DBR High Performance is a speed shop. We take your vehicle and make it faster. We specialize in domestic V8s, whether that's Chevy, Ford, Dodge, um, anything from superchargers, turbos, nitrous, bolt-ons, camshafts, anything in the realm of that. We do a ton of trucks. Trucks are really popular, especially in the Tennessee area. I started DBR High Performance because I just felt there was a need in this Nashville area to go fast, and um, I wanted to fill that need. I've always done racing since I was a kid, and I just wanted to do it for a living. So this is our dyno room. This is where we do all of our dyno tuning on our mainline hub dyno. Yeah, I see the VET on there. That's pretty awesome, ZR1. What I want to know, though, is what's this grocery getter doing in here? Well, it does look like a regular Grand Cherokee. It is a Grand Cherokee, obviously. But if you notice the brakes, they're a little bigger than normal. So it's an SRT, SRT8? It's not an SRT8. It's something tricky under the hood. It's a Jeep Trackhawk. Wow. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't. It's been debadged to not look like it on purpose. Yeah. Bit I, of a I, sleeper. I guess that's the point of the, the pinstriping here. The pinstripe, yep. Blacked out calipers. Yep. We haven't had a chance to drive one of these. Well, the key's in it. It's all yours. So we can take it? You can take it. I want to I want to drive first. <laughs> awesome. David, you're the man. All right. Ooh, and it's got the red key. <laughs> now it's time to get a little inspiration for our next project. Listen to that. <sighs> that wine is incredible. <laughs> You don't even, I mean, you hear the exhaust a little bit, but the wine just like pops. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Dude, okay. That, that is no joke. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to see it in my face. I'm like, whoa. Wow, at least it's got good brakes too. That's another thing. Oh yeah, this thing that. feels, it feels in, in the woe and the go. It it's feels all there. the same. On its own, it's just a 700 horsepower Hellcat engine, right? Yeah. But it's what you put it in that makes this thing so valuable. It's what makes this thing so expensive. Well, it makes it the package of, it's getting what you want in something practical. Sure, turn right here. Um, actually, pull it into the church. And then you want to switch? Yeah, let's switch. So you gonna let me drive it? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this thing. And the braking is just on point with it. Dude, that's, that was naughty. Let me see what it does here. Oh, yeah. It doesn't need to. Yes. <laughs> this thing hugs the road. I didn't even expect it to do what it just did. This is the pinnacle of a performance SUV performance truck slash SUV. Like this is it, nothing gets better than this. What if we just took the performance level that this thing comes out of the box with? Big brakes, high horsepower. Um, SUV. SUV. And we build our own. Yeah, I mean, I, 
I think that would be more challenging and different than just going and buying one of these and making a thousand wheel horsepower. Yeah, and then we can just build it the way we want and we can do it at a fraction of the cost of buying this thing new. Yeah, yeah so the key points are some type of Jeep SUV, supercharged, Yep. big bad brakes, 707 plus horsepower. Yes. If you knock that off, then you've got, well, a knockoff. Let's go ahead and just take this back to the shop. Yeah, I think we need to do some testing and reconnaissance. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Coming up next, instead of us getting our own track hawk, we want to use this to inspire our newest build. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Trash Hawk. 707 horsepower, all wheel drive, zero to 60 in three seconds flat on the street. This thing is a complete animal. I cannot say enough good things about the Trackhawk. I had a lot of fun in many vehicles over the years, but never had as much fun on the street in a stock production vehicle as I have with this. And that says a lot considering it's a big, heavy SUV. Now we could pick one of these up for the shop, but I think this thing is perfect the way it is. We could do bolt-ons, E85 swap, make 900 at the tires, but people are already doing that to these. So instead of us getting our own Trackhawk, we want to use this to inspire our newest build. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Trash Hawk. This is a 1986 Jeep Wagoneer, not a Grand Wagoneer. It's based on the XJ platform, just as the Cherokees were from 1983 to 2001. This one's just a little fancier. This one came equipped with factory vinyl wrapped wood grain, four headlights, even came with a set of fog lights. That's where it all stops. Doesn't have 707 horsepower, not all wheel drive, no ABS, no warranty, not reliable, list goes on and on. The only thing it does have is the $2,000 price tag. Which I like. <laughs> and we could pick everything out of this or even one that's been rolled over and put it into our Jeep, but at what point do you just buy one of these? So we really need to take what the essence of a track hawk is and inject that into our Jeep. What do we need to do that, Brandon? Well, it needs to be V8. Needs to be supercharged. Gotta have the wine. <laughs> Gotta have yep. that wine. And it needs to make at least 707 horsepower. Okay, that's enough. I mean, yep. if we can accomplish all of that, we've got our hands full. Now, before we dig into this thing and start taking it apart, let's look at what we're starting with. Said we picked this thing up for pretty cheap, two grand. Well, the reason is because it's got the 2.8 liter V6 under the hood, but not only that, the crankshaft is broken. So this is basically a pretty nice roller. One thing I noticed right off the bat, though, it's a small engine bay. Uh, so that's a bit of a concern for me. Well, the one good thing is they put the straight sixes in these trucks. So you know you have length, okay. but the width is going to be the problem. Uh, might have to pull the sawzall and grinder out, but we got to make sure that we put all the strength back because it is a unibody. Right. Uh, that's, that's one of the big concerns. Well, we can figure that out. Engine bay, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Let's talk about my favorite part of this okay. vehicle. I love this interior. Brandon, how about leather and corduroy? It's the continuing wood grain for me. <laughs> and it's in good shape too. For 35 years old, you can tell this vehicle was really well cared for. Oh, it's all original and nothing's been cut up. That's probably the best part. You think the front seats look good? Wait do you see the back. This thing looks like it's never even been sat in. I mean, look at that leather. I mean, seating for five and check this out. All this room, you can start a family in here. Let's just get it in the air and see what's going on underneath. XJs are unibodies, and this one's been taken care of pretty good. Someone undercoated it before to stop a lot of corrosion. Yeah, but just because they took care of it doesn't mean that it's going to handle all the power we're going to throw at it. No, especially the Dana 30. Right. <laughs> I mean, that thing is super puny. I mean, look at this drive shaft. It is no thicker than my thumb. Yeah, I, that's puny. We put steering shafts on trucks bigger than that. Transmission transfer case. Junk. Same thing, exactly. Moving on to the rear. Uh, fuel system, it's not going to handle 700 horsepower. Dana 35, not gonna handle it. No way, yeah. Well, we just need to start draining some fluids, getting some things out of here, and yeah, let's tear it apart. All right, let's do it. Up next, send it to the scrap bin. It's time to figure out just the right engine. The unibody and the firewall where they meet, that's the strongest point on that truck. And if you start cutting that up. I have an idea, meet me at the truck. Okay. 
Well, we're plugging away on our Jeep Wagoneer here. We've got everything underneath disconnected. That'd be the drive shafts, exhaust, all the plumbing and linkage. And we've got the transfer case sitting there on the cart. Everything underneath the hood's been taken apart. Radiator's gone, all the hoses and wiring. Even got the transmission on a jack right now. The only thing left is the two bolts and this thing's coming out. Do it. Oh. oh, I'm loose here. Did you disconnect everything? Got an oil pressure switch sitting over here. I hope so, we'll find out in a minute. <laughs> That's loose. A couple of vacuum lines. There's only a hundred of them. Well, it's the 80s. You're good now. Send it to the scrap bin. There we go. Good enough. Sweet. Wow. There's actually a, a lot more room than I thought there was. Same. Even the engine mounts, they got like another bracket we can get three or four more inches out of. Cool. At least for the width. So now what do we do? Take all this vacuum stuff up and clean it up and see if we can take some measurements. All right, let's do it. We're not sure what we're going to use yet, but we know what we're not going to use. So out it comes. Sorry, cruise control. I think we should save the power distribution block for the alternator and battery. This goes into the main harness, but a lot of this sensors and... Yeah, this is more sensors. More sensors, I would just lock Keep. it all off. <laughs> <laughs> got you there. Uh, now you gotta wonder if I was telling, being serious or being facetious. I tell you what, I'm just gonna keep them here for now, and if we need to cut them later... Yeah, you can decide later. We'll decide later. I love tearing everything apart. Whether it goes back together is, is sometimes my problem, but a lot of times not my problem. It's gonna be my problem. I think I'm gonna leave everything else here, which is kind of important. A blank canvas. These engine mounts and brackets, obviously all that's gonna have to go, but let's just take a measurement across the narrowest part and see what we're working with. Yeah. You can do the back of the bracket. Back of the bracket. That's 23 and three quarters on the back of my bracket, so. It's not a lot. Uh, being this is a unibody, I mean, without notching the frame, I mean, it's gonna be kinda tight. I think we should just start measuring some engines and see what we got. I mean, if we got a Hemi block. <laughs> Gen 3 Hemi? Yeah. I, we actually have one in house. Let's get a measurement on that and go from there. Okay. All right, so I think this is a uh, Detroit Muscle engine, but kind of gives us the idea oh, for yeah. size. Gen 3 Hemi. Yeah, so we should probably take a measurement like outside of the valve cover. The valve outside. Covers. All so right. That's 26 and a half. Mm. Ooh, that's pretty tight. I mean, the bottom might work, the block, as far as the block, but if you use the stock manifolds, or even if you made some custom exhaust manifolds. Yeah, I, I think mean, the problem's gonna be like with the firewall. Well, the unibody. I mean, the unibody and the firewall where they meet, that's the strongest point on that truck. And if you start cutting that up. I have an idea, meet me at the truck. Okay. Hey, Brandon. Yep. Catch. Oh. Oh, man. What? LS. Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? Look at that. I mean, it does fit. <laughs> I hate to be those guys who put LSs and everything, but there's a reason. It's a small package with a lot of potential. Yeah, I mean, we could force the Gen 3 Hemi thing, but uh, the guys down in Engine Power actually have an LS that they're working on right now that would be ideal to reach our power level. We just need to get a supercharger to put on top of it. I say we make some engine mounts and just go from there. 
With our engine choice made and Brandon working on the engine mounts, I figured I'd go ahead and get our transmission figured out and show you what we're working with. Now we know that the Trackhawk is both all wheel drive and automatic, and that's part of what makes it so streetable, but we're gonna actually go in another direction. We're gonna go with a stick and two wheel drive. And to do that, we're gonna use this Magnum six speed that we got from American Powertrain. Uh, this thing is great because it does have six forward gears, but the main thing with it is it'll handle that 700 pound feet of torque that we're thinking we're gonna make. Uh, not only that, the kit comes with a scatter shield. You can't just run a regular cast bell housing on something like this. A twin disc clutch from Center Force. What's great about a twin disc is it is streetable, but then it also has that extra grip for that kind of torque level. The kit also comes with this Hydromax clutch release bearing kit. Uh, it's basically your, your throw out bearing is your, your clutch release, and that's gonna be all hydraulic, and we'll figure that out as far as connecting that to a clutch pedal later on. For now, we're just in the mock-up phase, so we just need to get the bell housing mounted to the transmission and get it in the truck. Coming up, we test fit for a new engine for Trash Hawk. Plus, our transmission works its way in. We're not hitting the floor anymore. Well, that's good. And then comes a big surprise. Special delivery. Ooh, look at that. Now, Trash Hawk hasn't been this clean since probably before I was born. So after its bath, I still had to make the engine mounts. Now, this is a unibody, so you can't just go welding motor mounts to the sheet metal. You actually have to plate them, especially since we're running 707 plus horsepower in this thing. Now, I found a company online, Overkill by Design, that actually makes engine mount swap kits for LS to XJs. This is perfect because it's pretty much what I was going to design, but this is bolt-in and it's gonna save us a lot of time on this project. Plus, they're powder coated. Yeah, and on the engine side, it comes with these polyurethane mounts, so all we really need to do is drop this thing in. All the room. Let's go up with it. Yeah. Well, we've got our engine mounted in place, and that is a big relief. Uh, we still need to figure out our transmission here, but uh, it looks like there's a lot of room. What is gonna be a concern is where the shifter is gonna land. Uh, this vehicle was an automatic, and we removed the shifter, and it was like this big shifter assembly. It left this big hole in the floor here, and that's really where our shifter needs to land. That's gonna be the most comfortable for the driver. So there's only one way to find out, get a measurement and figure out where it is. And the center of this hole is actually 23 and about a quarter. So let's see what it's like here. 27. I mean, that's a little long, but uh, these shifters are reversible. They yeah. might get us pretty close. Actually, yeah, if it flips around 180, that's gonna be like within a quarter of an inch. Yeah, let's try it. All right. That's the great thing about these aftermarket transmissions. There's different shifter configurations, which work in a wide range of applications. Oh, look at that. 23 and one quarter. <laughs> oh, dude, that's the center of the holes. You can't get better, any better than that. Nah. Might have to take that bracket off. Keep going. Right there, you're touching. Okay. It's um, it's hitting that bracket. Mm. Okay. So we're gonna have to take that bracket off. Yeah. Even though the transmission fits in the tunnel, we want to make sure that there's enough clearance for when the drivetrain is under load. Oh, it looks good this time. Let me change the angle just a little bit. Swing the rear. Yeah, can you swing the rear? <clears throat> Is that where the boot's hitting? Yeah. Yeah. I think if we just cut that floor pan open just a little bit more. So like right there. Something like that? Yeah. not hitting the floor anymore. Well, that's good. Before I make my own, I want to see if this original cross member is going to work for us. Dude, that cross member actually works pretty good. Yeah, you got enough room here. And what's nice is we'll be able to run our exhaust above it. 
All we gotta do is make a little pedestal for the trans mount. Yeah. Well, the factory one was similar, but we could either bolt it in or just weld it on there with an offset pedestal. I, I think just weld off a new, a new pedestal. All right. For now, do you wanna just, since this is where we wanna set it, do you wanna just set something in here for now? That way we can get the transmission jack out and go back up top? Yeah, I think a two by four will sit in And there. we'll make that later? Yeah. All right, cool. Good. Good? Special delivery. Ooh, look at that. That's gonna make the power. Yeah, you wanna throw it on? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let me slide back a little bit. Right there. there yeah. Dude. Wow. I think the hood's gonna close. Only one way to find out. <laughs> All right, let's give this thing a try. I think it's gonna close. Oh, yeah. Hey, with room to spare, too. Brandon, how's the shifter location? Brandon. Hey, what? Hey, how's the shifter? It's awesome. <laughs> it fits in the same hole. I think the whole interior is going to go back the same. Perfect. We're well on our way, then. Yes. <laughs> this is too much fun, though. Follow along with us on this build at PowerNationTV.com. Uh, 999, 1,000. Coming up on Music City Trucks, we've got a strong show for you, and it's not my muscle going under the hood here. Today, we give Trash Hawk new life in the front. We beef up the back, and then this. Dude, I can't stop smiling. Day. I legit can't stop smiling. Welcome to Music City Trucks. We've got this 80s jewel in here, complete with the wood grain package, but it's not the body that's on the chopping block. It's everything underneath because we're building our vision of a track hawk knockoff that we're calling Trash Hawk. Now we've already had this LS engine installed into the truck, but even after adding a supercharger, this one didn't want to run. But we do have a real supercharged LS that's going to go in the truck today, along with all the other supporting drivetrain components, like the six-speed manual that we mocked up last time, and both axles. Up front, we've already determined we're switching to two-wheel drive. So this Dana 30 four-wheel drive has to go. But we do have a cool brake upgrade we want to show you, whether you've got a two-wheel or four-wheel drive XJ. And I'm going to be hitting the junkyard up for a rear axle that's one, going to fit under the truck, and two, it's going to handle the 700-plus horsepower thrown at it. And while I'm back there, I'm gonna address some altitude problems. Let's do this. Well, here's the axle that we picked up from a junkyard for a couple hundred bucks. It's out of a 2001 Jeep Cherokee two-wheel drive. And it's got all the mounting provisions exactly the same as ours, except it's two-wheel drive, so it doesn't have any of the center section or axles, it's just a blank tube in here. Uh, since it's a coil spring setup, and we are gonna lower this truck, we figured we'd just buy some lowering springs, but lo and behold, we couldn't find any. But as you can imagine, there's a ton of four wheel drive stuff available. So that's where we turned. There was a couple of things that we needed when we ordered a coil spring for the front of this vehicle. One, we need a static rate. And then also we needed something that's gonna be high enough rate to handle the extra weight we're adding to our XJ here. Seeing that we're switching from a six cylinder to an eight cylinder. And we can accomplish that with this set of coil springs that we got from Summit Racing. These are for a lifted vehicle, so the only drawback is they're actually taller and they're gonna compress less than the factory springs would, but it's nothing a little cutting won't fix. We'll just cut a couple of coils out of there. But when you're lowering or even lifting a vehicle that has a four link, especially on a steer axle like this, you don't wanna affect the caster too much. You need to compensate for that, and you can do that with adjustable control arms. We actually got this set from Summit as well. The great thing about these is they're super heavy duty, probably more heavy duty than we need, but they're easy to adjust, and that's gonna help us when we get this thing all dialed in to get our alignment right. So for now, all I need to do is get these coils cut. We'll get this front end installed. Notice we're using a cutoff wheel to cut our spring shorter. You never want to use a torch to either heat up and lower the spring or to torch it off because if you heat up the spring too much, it's going to sacrifice the integrity and that could cause a failure. Okay. 
Well, with the control arms in place, I could go ahead and get my cut springs in here. We are going to have to order some shorter shocks later, but we'll get to that. Um, I could go ahead and get this thing installed, but remember I mentioned that brake upgrade earlier? I want to go ahead and show you how to do that now while I've got this axle sitting here on the stand. We'll start by removing the caliper and then the rotor. Steering can be next. Then we can remove the spindle by unfastening the ball joints. Well, with that all torn down, let's talk about our upgrade. I'm very excited about this because we're saving some money. Instead of going with an expensive big brake kit, we're using all OEM style components that we got from rockauto.com. It's what you see here on the table. Let's start with the rotor. This is an 11 inch. This is standard on all XJs. We're going to switch to this 12 inch rotor. It has the same lug pattern, the five on four and a half. But this is from a 2002 Explorer Sport Track. Now, as far as the caliper goes, the single piston calipers that come on all XJs are pretty puny. You can see here compared to this dual piston caliper from a 99 to 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee or a WJ Jeep. It's quite a big upgrade, but in order to get that stuff to work, well, we need the spindles or the knuckles from that WJ. And that's what this is here. We got these from a junkyard, a couple hundred bucks. You could even buy the whole axle for that cheap. But that's not just going to attach right to our XJ axle. We actually have to upgrade the ball joints a little bit, get those pressed out, get the new ones in, and we get all of this stuff bolted on. We're going to replace both the upper and lower ball joints. The uppers will get replaced with factory XJ joints, while the lowers get replaced with longer WJ joint to match the knuckle. Now it's time to assemble the hubs. We're using XJ hub assemblies with a quarter inch spacer that we had made by Jimmy down in Carcass. The purpose of the spacer is to make sure the rotor and caliper are aligned properly. And then we're home free to install the bracket, pads, and caliper. And we've got us a DIY big brake kit. Very nice. Well, we've got our brake upgrade all done except for the hose, but that's easy enough. And we've got our axle installed. It's hanging from the original shocks, which we'll need to order some shorter ones later, but we have to get it set at ride height. And we can't do that until we get the engine and transmission in along with that rear end swap. And all that is coming up. Coming up next, a new life for a junkyard axle. Well, I made it to Butler's and this is pretty much a truck guy's dream. They got frames everywhere, bodies, tons of axles to choose from. So let's see if we can find what we need. Greg's got this yard pretty organized, so it wasn't too hard to find the Ford 8.8 .8 axle that we wanted. It's the right width, it's got disc brakes, limited slip, 373 gears, and the best part, it's the same bolt pattern as the front axle. So let's stop playing around, get this thing loaded up, and take it back to the shop. So with just a little research beforehand, you usually can save a ton of money when upgrading your project. That's why I love junkyards. All right, I'm pretty eager to get this Ford 8.8 .8 under trash hawk, but before we could do that, I gotta take all the old suspension out and that's gonna start with these old shocks. By the looks of it, the underside has seen a lot more salt than we originally thought. Some of these components are pretty crusty. There we go. Since we're swapping the axle, I'm just gonna cut the U-bolts. All right, I wanna give you a little perspective on how over-torqued those U-bolts were. That's the top plate. It should not look like a banana. And this is the bolt. It is literally bent in another direction. That is over torqued. And you can see how corroded and smashed the center is. It's actually lost thickness and these are separating. There's no way that this is gonna hold 
700 plus horsepower. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the old shocks and the original sway bar to make room for our 8.8. .8. I ordered up all new components, so we're retiring these well-cycled old leaves. All right, the first step in getting this 8.8 .8 into the Jeep Cherokee is take these brakes loose and get these purchase cut off. Now the Ford 8.8 .8 is the most common swap into any Jeep, and they make a bunch of kits. We got this one from Summit Racing. It comes with everything you need. We got the purchase, the U-bolt, the backing plates, even has the shock mounts. Now these kits are built with the off-road in mind and they bolt up on the bottom side of the leaf. Now we're gonna repurpose this kit for a flip kit and put it on the top of the leaf like that. And that's gonna give us the six inch drop that we want. It's gonna have that mean look with a strong axle and we don't have to reinvent the wheel while doing it. a pretty good angle to start with right there. Until we get the drivetrain and the truck at right height, uh, we're not gonna weld in anything. That way we can adjust pinion angle and get it, get it correct. It's really happening. Coming up next. This is an exciting day. This thing seems like a little bit of overkill. Welcome back to Music City Trucks. That's our awesome Trash Hawk engine on the dyno and engine power. And you can find the full engine build episode on Power Nation. It's pretty cool to have our own engine shop just down the hall. Well, it's off the dyno and in our hands. Now, since we're building a Track Hawk knockoff, we had to have at least 707 horsepower. And the guys at Engine Power, well, they blew it away with 785 horsepower, which is massive. Yeah, that's a huge number, and there's nothing wrong with a little extra horsepower, right? No. Now all we need to do is get this thing in Trash Hawk. This is an exciting day. This thing seems like a little bit of overkill. Nah. You good? Yep. Nope, right there, perfect. I'm all the way in. Did you ever envision Jeep saying back in the day, someone might stick a almost 800 horsepower engine in this thing? <laughs> mm, no, they definitely did not intend it for that. This is awesome. They'd be proud though. I'm gonna come down. Yeah. It's a little heavier than the other one was. Are we hitting on anything? No, it's just like it. sitting where it's wanting to. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! This makes, this makes me happy. It should. All kinds of room. You wanna drop the radiator in and see if it yeah. clears? Looks like there's gonna be plenty of room. Oh yeah. We probably could have mounted it in front of the radiator support. Well, you're still well, gonna have an interference with yeah, the intake. Yeah, it's okay. One word. One word? Groundbreaking. My word is um, <clears throat> money. <laughs> Dude, I can't stop smiling. Day. I legit can't stop smiling. Oh yeah. That's what we're gonna be doing on the track, just. No, it's gonna be like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know when this project was just a sketch on a napkin, we didn't expect the bigger pieces to fall together quite so easily. Yeah, we thought we had to at least pull the dash in the carpet and modify the firewall. But hey, we'll take it. Adjust it, adjust it a little bit, okay? 
It's probably pretty good right there. It's super close. Going up. Angle look good too? Uh, it could go down in the back or up in the front. Down in the back. Right there. Oh, that's perfect. Pretty good. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Like a glove. All right, you want to reset? Yeah. All right, now that we got the transmission in here, let's slap that cross member in. Ooh. Now the only thing we had to do to the original trans cross member is make this pedestal for the transmission to sit on, and that's gonna give us enough room for the exhaust to go on both sides. Another major component that you need to figure out when you're doing an engine swap like this is the exhaust manifolds. Now we were gonna use headers that were for an S10 with an LS swap, but they didn't fit. So we ended up going with these cast iron manifolds from Hooker. They're actually for a Jeep Wrangler with an LS swap. Plenty of room in here. Another thing you'll notice that we've been using a lot are these ARP fasteners. And whether you pick their black oxide or the stainless steel like we're using, they're super strong. They're even stronger than grade eight, but especially these stainless steel ones, they look nice as well. You can also get six point or 12 point heads. Uh, they offer kits, whether it be head bolt or head stud kits, but also accessory kits, and that's what we're using here. If you get one of those accessory kits, it comes with everything for your belt drive, comes with intake manifold bolts, valve cover bolts, oil pan, and even these for the manifold. A couple of things to keep in mind when you are using these, you got to use the proper assembly lube that ARP provides and then torque them to spec. Another thing too, if they don't already offer what you're looking for, they have a special order option and they'll make it for you. We just need to get these tightened up and then we're going to move on to addressing this ride height. Coming up, it's a whole new suspension for Trash Hawk and the ride height gets dialed in. We're making some great headway on Trash Hawk today. We got the engine and transmission installed permanently. I did an axle swap on the front from four wheel drive to two and even upgraded the brakes. Back here, Brandon swapped in this disc brake 88 out of an Explorer and he even did a flip on it while he was at it, which effectively lowered the rear suspension of our Jeep about six inches. Now that is where it's gonna be. We've actually got it compressed here and sitting at ride height. Uh, what's great now is that we get to use that as a starting point to set our ride height in the front. That way we can get this thing sitting on all fours, which I wanna get to today. Now the way we're gonna do that to eliminate any variables is we're gonna use this string, which is set up at the center line of the rear axle, like I mentioned, at full compression. Now with this thing being level and the vehicle sitting at the rake we want it at, at ride height, it's got a little bit of rake built in there. Let's double check and make sure this thing's level, and it is. Then we can determine where the center line of our front axle needs to be in relation to the wheel opening. And what we're gonna do is measure that, which is 16 inches. Now that we know that number, we can go ahead and strike the string, unload the rear suspension, compress the front suspension, and see where we're at. Right, we've got the front suspension at full compression. Now we can get a measurement and that is 19 and three quarters. So we need to check a couple of other things before we determine what we need to do to make up that three and three quarters of an inch. Uh, we've got four and a half inches between the oil pan and the axle tube, which is plenty. And then between the upper control arm and the engine mount, we've got exactly three and a half inches. So that's a problem. If we raise the axle three and three quarters of an inch like we need to to get to our measurement, well, the control arm will just be sitting on the engine mount, so we can't do that. Plus, we need a little extra room for up travel of the suspension, we'll say about an inch. So in order to get our coil cut, we need to figure out how much of it we need to cut. So if we're gonna go two and a half inches, we need to know how much height is in one single coil, and that is two inches. So we need to cut out one and a quarter coils. I just need to unload the suspension, pull the coils out, cut them, we'll put them back in and compress it. Try it.
Okay, moment of truth. Uh, we've got, with our current setup, the front as low as it's gonna go. Um, and it looks like it's not as low as the rear yet. Give, give it a shake just to make sure. And uh, so now at this point, uh, we have to either lift the rear, which we can totally do, or figure out another way to lower the front. And we've already said the upper control arm is gonna hit the engine mount here. Uh, so that's the next point of contact. So I think you know which way I wanna go. And that's gonna be get the cutoff wheel out and force this front to go down. So what we're gonna do is cut the upper trailing arm pedestals and lower them to gain us some clearance. This is gonna change our geometry a bit, but that's what the adjustable control arms are for. All right, from the center of the bolt to the bottom of the axle tube is six and three quarters. And that one's four and a quarter now, so that gained us two and a half inches. Well, that was kind of a dirty way to get there, but we've got plenty of travel and we've got a little extra room if we want to lower the front a little more. We're about an inch away from my goal here, but before we do that, I want to go ahead and raise the rear up just a little bit. We can always cut more out of those coils later. And now we're going to be lifting the rears with an add leaf. This is a leaf that goes inside the pack you already have, and it's going to increase the spring rate, which increases the height by one and a half to two inches, depending on your application. So let's get these in there. Voila. I think we were a little ambitious thinking we could lower the truck six inches all the way around with that stock straight axle. But with the Adelief, it's easy enough to raise the rear to match the front, which we kind of suspected we were gonna have to do anyway. But hey, that's part of building hot rods. Well, this project's getting real. We've got an almost 800 horsepower supercharged LS under the hood now, six speed manual gearbox. We did a swap on the rear with a flip and we even put a two wheel drive front axle here with bigger brakes. Yeah, we also lower the truck about four inches after correcting the rear right height. Yeah, but we've got, a, uh, we've got some wheels and tires on order, so it's even gonna get lower once we get those on there. Can't wait to show you it on the ground on those. Yeah, so the next time you see Trash Hawk, it's gonna get a fuel system, exhaust, finish up all the wiring, and then go do burnouts. And donuts. Yeah, and burnouts. Mostly burnouts and donuts. Oh, we need to order two more tires for the burnouts. Yeah, just pretty much anything that's gonna like burn the tires off. Yeah. Maybe four tires. Today on Music City Trucks, we're putting the finishing touches on Trash Hawk. And then it's off to the races with a payoff you won't believe. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Crest. And we've got our Jeep project back in here. It's an XJ86 Jeep Wagoneer that we're calling Trash Hawk. It's got an LS supercharged engine, six speed manual transmission, and we swapped in a Ford 8.8 in the rear. We lowered it, converted it to two wheel drive, which is kind of not normal, but we also did a DIY big brake upgrade. Now it's a big day for us and for this project because we're gonna get all the finishing touches done on it get it running and driving and take it out and shred some rubber. Man, I was gonna say that. All right, the first thing I'm gonna work on is our fuel system. Now the guys down at Engine Power already installed a Fitech EFI system on our supercharged LS. So of course I went back to them for our fuel pump. This has two 340 liter per hour fuel pumps in it. It's internally regulated and it's capable of up to 1600 horsepower. So this system's perfect for what we got going on with our 788 horsepower. The kit also comes with all the fittings, stainless lines. All I gotta do is find a spot under the truck and get this thing mounted. Okay, with how low this Jeep is and how tightly packaged everything is underneath the truck, the safest place for this fuel pump is gonna be on this interior quarter panel. All I gotta do is make a metal bracket to hold it up, run the fuel line straight through the floor into the tank. And the cool part about this, I get to keep most of my interior panel. All I gotta do is cut a little hole out, so I just gotta make the bracket. The material I'm using is just some polished stainless I found laying around. Oh, dude, that ain't going nowhere. Now all I gotta do is get the panel trimmed, run the fuel lines to the floor. Yeah, 
Yeah. We got a new tank from rockauto.com, but modified the original sending unit with a pair of Dash 6 bulkhead fittings so we could retain our factory fuel gauge. With the tank in place, we're gonna install this inline electric fuel pump. All right, now that we got all the components mounted, it's time to plumb everything. Now how we get all that fuel out of the tank is by that pump that Mark just installed right about here. That's actually gonna feed this sump. And this is your inlet for the sump. And then this is the return back to the tank for the fuel you don't need. And these are your two high pressure lines that are gonna feed the engine. Now both those lines get a check valve and we're gonna go ahead and run it through a Y that way we could run one line up to the front. Then that's gonna take a 10 micron filter before it gets to the engine. That way we know the fuel is nice and clean. Now how all that's regulated is by these two boost references right here, and that's gonna run off the vacuum of the engine. Now the nice thing about Fitech is their fuel pump wire and relay are already integrated into the EFI, so all you gotta do is plumb and wire everything and you're ready to go. We just went ahead and cut a hole in the floor, nothing too crazy. We're just using Dash 6 AN lines for the whole fuel system, and we're installing all the fittings hand tight until all the lines are routed. Then we'll go back and tighten everything. Installing AN hose ends onto braided line can be a little tricky at first, but practice makes perfect. This is the return line to the tank. Looks pretty good. This is our little contraption we came up with to get our check valves, our Y, and our post filter installed so that we only have to run one line up to the front. Wow, that looks really nice, Brandon. Yeah, this setup, uh, pretty sweet. So, um, I hate to stop you, but we've got some other things that we need to take care of here. Seems like you're putting a lot of pressure on me. Brakes. Talking about brakes. Up next, we put a charge along with a sweet brake upgrade in Trash Hog. Well, up front here, we've gotten a lot accomplished. If you'll remember last time, we switched this thing from four wheel drive to two wheel drive, and then we lowered it. And then we also upgraded to the WJ brakes, which added about one inch overall diameter to our rotor, which is a pretty cool brake upgrade for you DIYers at home. But we do have some more upgrades that we wanna do to the brakes here, which we're gonna do first. But while we're at it, we're also gonna finish all the other connections up front. A Couple of things we've got missing, like we gotta get our sway bar links connected here. We still gotta connect the brake hoses and a couple other little things. These OEM pads and rotors are fine, but we've got something better in mind. This axle stub right here, this is important. Just like the four wheel drive version, the hub bearing assembly is held together by the axle. And since this is a two wheel drive, it still needs that support. So this unit gets a stub shaft in place of the axle shaft and is torqued to 175 foot pounds. Now that big brake upgrade we showed you last time is just fine with all of those OEM components, but we're gonna be doing some particularly spirited driving with our Jeep here. So we went to EBC brakes for this pad and rotor combo. This is EBC's USR rotor. These yellow stuff pads are my go-to. These pads are great for the street or track. Oh yeah, that looks nice. One last upgrade we wanna do here on the front suspension on our Jeep is gonna be this track bar. Now this factory one is just fine if you're gonna be running stock ride height. If you're gonna lift or lower, in our case, you wanna have an adjustable track bar. Now this one we got from Summit Racing, it is made for lifted Jeeps, uh, but since it's adjustable, this will work fine for us, and plus, it's extra beefy. With that track bar in place, we can get the sway bar links installed, followed by the tie rods, and this front end is done. 
Well, that does it here for the front end of our Jeep. We do need to bleed the brakes, and as you can imagine, our alignment's all out of whack now, so we need to get that taken care of, but we'll do all that right before we take it out for its maiden voyage. All right, so the last time we worked on this rear end, we got it all welded up, the pinion angle's correct, went through and put new bearings and seals in it, even did a true track and this nice fancy diff cover, even got the shocks and sway bars in it. But the one thing we didn't do are these wheel studs. Now, since we're running almost 800 horsepower to this rear end, we want to put stronger studs in it and longer studs. That way we could run different tires, say we're at the track or the drag strip. So the first thing we need to do is get these axle shafts out. Now I went ahead and took the gas tank and fuel lines out to make it a little easier for you guys to see this. These differentials are so easy to take apart. Most of it falls out. There we go. Once you get that C-clip out, axle shaft just comes right out. So here's a little comparison between the wheel studs we're gonna be using. You can see this is the factory one and this is an ARP one. They're a lot longer and stronger and a lot of racing sanctions actually require you to have a longer wheel stud. So this is a little safety precaution for us on Trash Hawk. It takes a little extra effort to install these ARP studs because the knurls are so strong, which is exactly what we want. Well, we're getting pretty close to the finish line here on our Jeep, but there's a few things we still need to button up before we can get this thing on the ground and running and driving. One of those is the electrical system, specifically the starting system. So we went to our local AutoZone for all of this stuff by Duralast. Uh, this battery is actually the size that's for our Jeep, but it's got enough cranking amps to turn over that supercharged LS that we've got under the hood. And they had the battery cables we needed. We just ordered custom lengths. Uh, but the centerpiece when it comes to the starting system is, of course, the starter itself. So we went with this Duralast remanufactured starter. Now, remanufactured doesn't necessarily mean less quality. These Duralast starters are engineered for OE or better performance and torque output. They're remanufactured by Tier 1 or OE manufacturers with 100% new wear components and high quality materials. All the brushes are completely new and these things are built to take the heat. With some new bolts and those fresh cables, this Jeep's almost ready to get cranking. Well, that pretty much buttons up the underhood here for our trash hawk. As you can see, we had to cut a hole in the hood here for the air cleaner. That's fine. I mean, we knew we were gonna have to do something with that anyway. And then we added some hood pins, unfortunately, but I'm okay with hood pins as long as they're functional. And since we had to eliminate our hood latch a while back when we installed that radiator, well, they were kind of necessary, but they do kind of look cool. So it won't be long now until this thing is gonna be hitting up the track. Next, Trash Hawk shows its dyno mic. This thing feels like a rocket ship. Well, we are getting dangerously close to getting Trash Hawk out for its maiden voyage and to do things, well, Jeep Wagoneers just shouldn't do. And the last piece of the puzzle is gonna be wheels and tires. Now we went with an off the shelf 18 inch Koenig. This is a flow formed wheel, so it's not gonna break the bank. We went with bronze to match that wood grain. Now these are Continental Extreme Contact Sports, 285.40 in the rear, 265.40 in the front. This is an ultra high performance street tire for your daily or track vehicle. This has a 340 tread wear, so it's not a full race tire, but it's not gonna wear out as soon as you hit that asphalt. Now, this thing is awesome in the dry, but extremely good in the wet. And that's because of the tread design and all this siping. So if you've got a street truck or a full on race car or just a track daily, this is the perfect tire. Now, we chose this for Trash Hawk because it's light, has a ton of horsepower, and we need all the traction we can get to get to that asphalt on the street and the track. So, just gotta put this one on. 
It may or may not be your cup of sweet tea, but this is Trash Hawk, and we absolutely love it. All right, we got Trash Hawk all buttoned up, and we're down here at engine power on the dyno to see how much power it makes because this is a trashy version of a Track Hawk. <laughs> so one of our requirements was 707 at least horsepower. Well, we did that on the dyno. We made 787, so we beat it by 80. But these things will have about a 15% driveline loss with a manual transmission. So it'll be interesting to see what it does. But uh, this thing is spectacular. It's one of my favorite builds you guys have done. Well, I, I appreciate you guys saying that because you guys are about the first people to see this. So <laughs> if y'all are uh, done yakking, we'll see what it'll do. Right. I'm excited. I want to see. I'm going to turn on turn our loud on. fan here. Can I get a toy? We have toys at home, son. You keep it up, I'm gonna turn this thing around and take us back home. and 601 pound-feet. 601.97 pound-feet. That's that, ripping. That, that's meaner. I thought it was going to be through that. Exhaust. Yeah. No, that's that's really good. I, I expected it to be a little less, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, dude, I am I am almost speechless on this one because yeah. it's so cool. This thing uh, is so sweet. I, I, I want to see it run, and now you're going to go run it. Oh, yeah. yeah. As much as I'd love to sit here and just make bulls all day, we gotta go drive gotta this go. thing. This thing's gonna be wild. It, you better oh, be careful. No doubt. It was <laughs> wild on here. Yeah. All right. Woo. Up next, it's hot laps <laughs> and hotter burnouts. <laughs> Well, we are here at NCM Motorsports Park in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and what better place to take Trash Hawk out and see what it can do. Than the track? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then out here in the lot. Yeah. Because... Well, there's a lot of rubber left on these new tires. Yeah. Those tires aren't going to be any good when we're done here, I promise you that. So, I figured since you haven't been out here on this track and I've got some, some seat time out here yeah. and some experience with this track, I'd... Let's just take some some leisure laps here, yeah. So you can get a feel for the for the track. Totally. It's an amazing facility. The surface is great. It's got some elevation changes, all different types of turns. Yeah, it's a really really good track. Lots of power, man. Yeah. Steering is not as positive as I would want it to be, but this thing is straight up animal. And this Ooh, thing feels stable. Running. I'm not gonna pretend like it's not. But feel that, feel that lateral grip. Yeah. I mean, the grip with these tires is pretty impressive. That was all those brakes had. <laughs> that was all they had. But you know what? Overall, this thing is mind-bogglingly fast. Yeah. We're gonna do some cool down. That was that was a little harsh. Our suspension setup, as far as because we got the lifted coils that have a higher spring rate, right? That we cut shorter. Yep. yep. We have the ad leaf in the rear, the axle on top of that, the leaves. Yep. So there's less axle wrap. We got what 285s? Two, what is it? 285, 40 fit, uh, 18s. I mean, we got bigger sway bars. Yeah. Everything on this truck, even the lo even the lowered straight axle, is like, oh yeah, dude, I never thought it was gonna handle like this. No. Well, we made a few laps. Uh, Brandon's got familiarized with the track a little bit. Uh, now that I've gotten the car shaken down quite a bit, I feel comfortable going out and making some hot laps. So I'm gonna get my brain bucket here. All right, so I'm just gonna go up in the crow's nest and watch. All right, yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna see what she'll do. A ripper. 
When I dreamed up this concept of using an XJ to build a Trackhawk knockoff, I never dreamed it would turn out to be such a cool and impressive truck. It's a counterfeit, and a poor one at that. It's powered by an LS, not a Hemi. It's a manual instead of a zippy modern auto, and it's rear-wheel drive, a huge difference from the all-wheel drive Trackhawk. But it just works. It handles like a sports car, it's got a ton of grip, plenty of braking, and accelerates coming out of the turns like a banshee. It's a little sketchy, but in a way that makes it more fun to drive. Is it a Trackhawk? No, but it's better in so many ways. Plus, it just looks cool. NCM's Corvette experience gives you a combination of classroom instruction and hands-on practice on the track in a lead-follow format. You can get behind the wheel of a C8 Corvette Stingray Z51 for laps around their 3.2 miles, 23 turns road course, built for speed. And when you become a member of the driving club at NCM Motorsports Park, you become part of a special community of like-minded motorsports enthusiasts. Okay, so now it's your turn. Yeah, I'm gonna grab my helmet. Have fun. This truck's awesome. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, this is the first time driving this thing. Be safe out there. When he comes back, he is gonna have a permanent smile on his face. You're not gonna be able to wipe it off for weeks. You watch. Finally, it's my turn to take the wheel of Trash Hawk and see what she can do. Oh my God, this thing's a handful. This thing is awesome. Holy cow. Wow, this is like nothing I've ever driven. The way this handles is, it shouldn't do this. You don't need much more life than a 700 horsepower Cherokee. Oh yeah. That's every bit of 125. Well, I used every last bit of fuel in this thing. <laughs> There's no explaining this. <laughs> you have to you have to drive this. The pedal? <laughs> so the the one comment that I had when I was driving it was if you blindfolded me and you put me in here and then you cut a hole in the windshield and all I could see was what was in front of me, I would never in a million years guess that I was driving a Jeep. No. Any Jeep, like doesn't even matter, just it's a Jeep. Yeah, I, I would be able to tell it's probably a little bit heavier than, or a different shape than a car. Right. This has probably been- I knew it. The best day at work ever. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah. All right, dude. Oh, On yeah. to the next one. Let's get this thing out of here, get it back to the shop. Put a for sale sign on it. <laughs> Start building something else cool. But before we go. Oh, it'll do a burnout. <laughs> Your turn. 